Hello guys, Messy Plays here, back at it again. How are you doing today? I am playing Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishments. We are just interviewing one suspect in the bathhouse murder, so let's continue that. Please try to recall what you saw today. The room was so, so hot, I, I had to remove my glasses. I was not feeling so very well I in there. But you found the body. I saw the knife, you know. Flying through the air, I, I, I saw the blood. I tried to escape, I, I don't remember. You saw the knife? What did it look like? Everything was as if in a nightmare. It all happened so fast. The knife was shining like, like gold. Had Sir Rodney exhibited any recent strange behaviour? Well, he, he had been rather secretive these past few days. Last Thursday, for, for example, I, I saw him leave. When he returned, it, it was very late. He showed me some wet coins, Roman coins, and uh, he started to laugh. His ring! Oh, it should be destroyed. Why do you say that? It is a cursed ring, digging dark secrets. Really? I... Uh, it is after me now. I know it. Uh, I shouldn't have worked on it in the workshop. It's too late now. This is the coin that, that he showed me. It is from the third century. It must be very rare. No, I... I, I, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. This will help me to calm down. Do be careful with the dosage. I, I will. I mean it. Got a feeling that uh, that drug is causing him to have like a psychotic episode. Did you place the bottle of champagne Inspired in the changing room? Inspired by the superstitious what? nature of the no. uh, Garrow appears to be rather yeah, mentally defined. disturbed. Yeah. Either that, or he is a good actor. He thought he was uh, being attacked, so he stabbed. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Sherlock is so intense. Good day to you, sir. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and I am assisting the police with their investigation of the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Nice Would you beer. mind if I asked you a few questions? Not at all, Mr. Holmes. Uh, my name is Percival Blinkhorn. Is that a birthmark? Check out his fucking face. What is that? Nothing. Focused look. Definitely a birthmark. No ring. Gardener? What is your occupation? I'm an archaeologist, specializing in the Roman period. I'm working on several excavation sites at present, including the baths at Strand Lane. Including the baths. Can you tell me more about the baths? Well, we're hoping to retrieve a great many interesting artifacts from the site, and to list any items of value before their eventual restoration and exhibition. And has it been successful? No. It has. Thanks to Sir Rodney. What was your relationship with Sir Rodney? Well, I couldn't say that he was a kind man, no. Uh, but he was talented. I felt a great admiration for him, I, I must say. Was it your first collaboration? I had met Sir Rodney briefly once in Egypt, and I'd shared my researches with him. Surprisingly, my work did convince him to come here. He arrived only a couple of months ago. Surprisingly? Well, Sir Rodney is, uh, was, uh, God, a cold man, and so very secretive, too. But I learned so much from him. I can't believe that he's dead. Can you tell me what you saw today? Well, we entered the steam room, and we all went to sit down. Uh, the steam was particularly dense, and I didn't see anything much further after that. I just heard Mr. Garrow shouting. But we all ran for the door and bumped into each other. I was very alarmed by this point. What did you do? Well, the door was stuck. 
And with all the steam, it was quite frightening. I was barely able to see my own feet. Garrow was covered in blood. Do you believe that Garrow killed Sir Rodney? Oh, no. Garrow couldn't harm a fly. Can you recall any recent event that would occur to you now as being a little strange? Well, yesterday we had a small argument. Is that all? No. Sir Rodney informed me that he was to attend the London Archaeological Congress with me. Then he advised me of quite the opposite. And rather aggressively, too. Do you recognize this ring? Uh, certainly. It's the famous Aswan ring. Sir Rodney brought it back from his last campaign in Egypt. And he kept it for himself? Sir Rodney has uh, had his own particular ideas of archaeology. What can you tell me about Garrow? Well, he always looks so sad. And uh, he has been acting strangely lately. He complains about voices and visions. I will keep an eye on him because I'm worried. How well were your researchers progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather well. This letter reveals that Sir Gregory was prepared to put a stop to your work. Um, uh, yes. But since Sir Rodney's arrival, he had calmed down. He allowed us to work. Uh, I'm not sure what they agreed on. Hmm. What will happen now that Sir Rodney is dead? Well, I haven't thought about that. Uh, but if it's needed, I will fight to defend Sir Rodney's expectations. Did you place the bottle of champagne in the changing room? No, I did not. All very good. Right, let's talk to the last dude. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Good day to you, Sir Gregory. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the murder that took place this morning. Would you mind answering a few questions? Tell me, Mr. Holmes, will I need to stay here for very much longer? You are the manager of the baths, is that correct? Yes. I'm passionate about archaeology. I wanted to restore the ruins. My ambition is to open the baths to the public. Living archaeology can be a profitable business. Although now I'm not so sure. I see. When do you wish to begin using the baths? When the archaeological researches are over, I will be free to complete the restoration. It is the usual process. What was your relationship with Sir Rodney Bentcliffe? We were not particularly close. He had an unpleasant temperament. Suspicious. Authoritarian. Unkind. People possessed by genius may be forgiven for their nature, but not by me. Was he obstructive? Not at all. Everything he did led us to greater success. He helped us increase the potential of the building. Please tell me what happened this morning. The test that we performed this morning was a success. The steam was working well. But then, of course, that awful murder. What did you see? The steam was too thick to see anything. But ask Garrow. He saw the body first. Had Sir Rodney exhibited any recent strange behavior? Look. I'm not a suspicious fellow, but I think that he had professional interests elsewhere that he did not wish us to know about. Why should you think that? Where? I have no idea. But after all, it was not my business. How was the work progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather slowly, I would say. Sir Gregory, could you please explain this letter? You expressed the wish to call off the research work at the baths. It was all about Blinkhorn. He was merrily digging away and taking very little care about it, ruining everything and finding nothing of any value. But the arrival of Sir Rodney changed your mind? Sir Rodney's work was extremely promising, and it was good for the baths publicity. So yes, I changed my mind. Are you aware that Mr. Garrow is under a form of medication? Garrow? No. 
but I never liked that parasite. Do you believe him to be capable of murder? Well, he did have blood on him. Does that make him a murderer? Did you bring a bottle of champagne to the baths? Absolutely not. Sir Rodney did, I think. Now, he's got a big old gold ring on, and they said when he was getting stabbed, there was a flash of gold. I've got a feeling it could be him. Because they're making Gatkins seem like the obvious choice, with kind of, maybe a bit of, I don't know, schizophrenic, you know, vision. Big old gold ring. Gold watch. Gold all in my chain. Well, he does look like he's disdaining, so that's accurate. Let us... Good day to you, Mr. Holmes. Oh, we've got a lot. Okay. Garrow's drug and Pitkin's fight. No. Strange wound, Pitkin's fight. Shit. That's gotta be one. Why would Sir Rodney be hiding anything? Cause he could his discovery be the motive for the crime? Could be. Okay. How do we do that? CCTV? Might be more to these. <sighs> Remarkable discovery. Pain in the fight. Could the champagne have been the drug been put in the champagne? I need more. I plainly need more stuff. How do I find out where he was? I'm gonna have to check the trade on her. this it's gonna be like empty 10 beakers oh I forgot I'm in first person great all right let's do some analyzing let's definitely do it Selenite, pyrite, otherwise known as fool's gold. Do 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 do. So that too. white clay particles. Interesting. According to the color and its composition, I deduce that this sample is white clay. Now. I need to find which area near London this sample belongs to. That the one? sample of dirt belongs oh, to the God. White London Clay region, located near the city of St Albans. Let's go. Let's analyze some more. Let us analyze this blood sample. Put it in focus. 
Some ketchup in here. This blood has not coagulated well. But see, let us see what is inside it. Hydrogen peroxide will bring any foreign matter to the surface. I must take a pipette and place several drops of hydrogen peroxide. Pipette? Wow, I actually feel like Sherlock Holmes. Water. This blood is heavily diluted with water. Well, there was steam in the room. My God, mate. This is a piece of metal taken from a brazier. It appears to be silver, but I need to be sure. If it is silver, it will be possible to melt it, since silver's melting point is at around 900 degrees Celsius. Let us compare this sample with a silver penny by testing it with acid. If it changes color to match the result of a reaction with a silver coin, then it is silver. I must take a oh, not a pipette. Try the uh, silver coin. Pink. It is silver. The reaction is the same red stain. It is silver. Britannia silver quality. Made by coins. My analysis table. It is useful for my work. Let's try and do some. Let us get the grease cells to work. Liquid blood. Champagne. Brazia and Strange Ruin. Oh my god. It's fucking nothing, yeah? The fight and the broken glasses. Now that was a good one. That should have been that. Uh, uh, Check the uh, archives. God, I love the first person view. I'm gonna play like this from now on. Eighteen eighty three. That is not the one I need. How do you know? Eighteen ninety three. That is not the one I need. That is not. That is not the. It's the last fucking one. Why didn't I click the one with the mummy in the title? The great excavation in Awazan has taken over three years. Sir Rodney Bencliffe directed the archaeological work. A mummy was found with an enulsulated eye and posed in an unusual position. The right hand was tensed as if it was reaching for something or to someone. The mummy was buried upright. She had been named the Desperate Mummy due to her very peculiar characteristics. Near, nearby could be read in Latin by the eye. He was punished for he saw what, what he was not worthy. The mummy is believed to be Roman eh, rather than Egyptian. As some symbols found in the tomb are common with Mithraic mysteries. Here it is. By the eye he was punished for he saw that he was not worthy. What? Dreadful. Ooh. Let's have a look at the map. So many good details in this game this is this is a gorgeous model isn't it like look at these small photos and they don't seem to be repeating either there's a lot of love put here just to make it feel authentic you know skull and 
formaldehyde. Really hats off to the guys who made this. Let's check the map. Now we have two maps. We must combine. Yeah, I get the the gist. Hopefully there's a you know it's a lot to play with. Nope. Oh there we go. That's it. Watson, pack your bag. We are visiting a location in St. Albans marked on Sir Rodney's map. Don't bust me around, Sherlock. Look at that. 2D4, or even skip there. So we're in the country. Ooh, this game looks so much better in uh, first This person. archaeological site has been abandoned. Why did Bentcliff come here? I don't know. Can we go in? Oh, we can. Let's run. I bet we can't walk over here. Oh, can. Oh, Cyclops. Is that what's down here? Area 1, Triclinium. What a good level. The Cyclops, a one eyed creature helping Vulcan at the forge. Vulcan. The god of fire and metalworking. So who has one eye? Wow, this is awesome. What a cool level. I really do feel like Sherlock Holmes. Area 2. The pits. I'm not going down there, am I? Excavating tools. A bucket, shovel, and brush. I don't need the ropes for now. I don't. But I will for this. Nope, I won't. Is that a fucking skull? Oh, this is creepy. Let's go in there first, because I think I ran ahead. Don't want to miss anything. Roman baths. Domen Hadriano. This is the map of the site. We are at the heart of an old Roman city. Followers, the Mithras were covert, worshipping more conventional deities such as Juno or Neptune in their everyday lives. Mithras temples were usually found below the temples of other gods. Mithras followers often refer to their traditional deities to gain passage to the Mithraeum. The example of the Mithraeum of Dio in France is interesting, as the entrance was located beneath a carved statue of Diana. This entrance was possibly revealed by a clever stone and rope mechanism, which may never have been discovered if the water infiltration had not been destroyed, had not destroyed the mechanism, opening the way down to the Mithraeum. Mithraic temples can be found in Rome, Ostia, Numidia, Dalmatia, Britain, and along the Rhine-Danube frontier, while being somewhat less common in Greece, Egypt, and Syria. My fucking god. My lord. Not more things to read. Oh my god! And the empty coconuts that they used to imitate the sound of horses' hooves. 
Another strange ritual for the old gods to keep the evil spirits away. The people feeling that the dark eye was upon them would melt their valuables in the fire. Sub-Saurian tribes burned fruits and the rich Romans families spared no expense melting silver or tin. It is not recorded if such valuable offers were thrown away with the dashes of the way reused at a later date. So that's a clue about the knife being melted. It's a ritualistic killing. Silver? The cult of Mithras was a mysterious religion practiced within the Roman Empire from around the 1st to 4th century AD. The name of the Persian god Mithra, adapted by the Greek as Mithras, was linked with a new and distinctive imagery. Worshippers of Mithras had a complex system of seven grades of initiation. For ritualistic meals, initiates, initiates would meet in the underground temples called Mithria that were retained in large numbers. The iconic scenes of Mithras showed him as being born from a rock and slaughtering a bull. And I'm going to try that last word. Oh my god, they're making me read so much. The knife used by Mithras for the Otorotony, the sacrifice of the bull, is originally a curved sacrificial blade of Persian origin. Its curve can be from 5 to 15 degrees. The name is derived from the Persian Shamshir, which means sword. This radically curved sword from family includes the Shamshir, Scimitar, Talwa, Kalij, Pilwa, and Mongol Saber. A myth of the golden knife is the key to the Mithraic mysteries that some describe as an equivalent to the Holy Grail. The golden knife carries the curve that will spill the blood of the un unworthy who would dare to touch it. So it was a ritualistic killing with the curved knife. Temple. Temple of Construction two. hooks. Good music. What a big level. Wasn't expecting this. I think the computer's handling it better in the uh, first person. Here we go again, more train tracks. This railway is used to remove rubble from the site. What's down here? We're getting into some uncharted shit here. No more reading, I swear to God. No! My god, there's tons. Dear Lord Blackmore, the manager of the bath, Sir Gregory Pitkin, was quite a nuisance at the start when I arrived. After you stepped in, it became rather more helpful. Occasionally, people of his rank are not well suited to a work of such great magnitude. They lack the necessary vision. In a few weeks' time, I hope to bring good news of the Strand Lane Baths. I am on the verge of discovering a major archaeological artifact. One that might be used politically by your party to demonstrate the strength of our ancestors and fulfill the need to protect our empire from present and future threats. And more. Calvin. Calvin and Hobbes. Hobbes and you consider yourselves as being so smart and funny. I had a good laugh when you froze Miss Durkin's note about the Arch of Hadrian in the ice. However, our thesis exams are just ahead, and as you are the so-called brain of your improbable duo, I have to warn you that my gastrophetes model, the ancient Greek crossbow, are not the medical device to relieve constipated people, as you might have thought. It's not to be touched, or else I'll have to inform Mr. Wormwood about everything you've done these past two years. I ate hops, tuna sandwich, a spittle. No more notes, please, for God's sake. Yes. This is a reproduction of an ancient Greek crossbow. I need that rope. This How is that an object of interest? I need to put some... Put my brain cells to work. Okay. Okay. 
strange wound what strange wound nope wow they're not giving me very much are they But I'm going to end the video there guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe. And I will catch you next time for more Sherlock Holmes. Goodbye guys.